Right, we're in the middle of Kamikaze and we've looked at the first stanza where it's established the patriotic sense of duty of the kamikaze pilot to die for his country, to crash his plane into enemy targets for, for maximum destruction. But as much as we've got an overwhelming amount of patriotic imagery there, just little hints appear, even in the first stanza, of natural imagery of the fact that the kamikaze pilot might be in two minds about what is his duty and what he wants to do inside he thinks of his family and wants to live and that is established more over the next three stanzas that we're going to focus on in this particular section but halfway there she thought recounting it later to her children he must have looked far down at the little fishing boats strung out like bunting on a green blue translucent sea and beneath them arcing in swathes like a huge flag waved first one way then the other, in a figure of eight, the dark shoals of fishes flashing silver as their bellies swiveled towards the sun and remembered how he and his brothers, waiting on the shore, built cairns of pearl grey pebbles to see whose withstood longest the turbulent inrush of breakers bringing their father's boat safe. First thing to notice, structurally, there's lots of enjambement. And as we've talked about before with uh, remains, and Jean Beaumont is really common in poetry. And you need to comment on it when you've got something specific to say. It's the lack of punctuation at the end of one line, so that one line and one thought runs into the next line. And in this case, also runs into the next stanza. What we could say about the Jean Beaumont here is that it's a, a fluid transition between one train of thought and another train of thought. His duty as a kamikaze pilot, his duty as a family man, his duty to the human race perhaps, to live, to survive, to, to carry on. And, and that contradicts his mind, it, it, it confuses his thinking as he goes through on that one-way journey into history from, from the first stanza. Halfway there, she thought. So we got this sense that mid-journey, um, mid-destiny, um, mid-duty, he starts to think about what he's actually doing. It's reminiscent, isn't it, of uh, Bayonet Charge uh, with Ted Hughes when in that second stanza the soldier stops just for a minute to think what he's doing. But in Bayonet Charge, that soldier continues. He's mid-charge. This is almost like a charge in, in an aeroplane. But in this case, the pilot starts to think a little bit more about his actions. Halfway there, she thought, recounting it later to her children. So we don't get this from the grandfather's perspective. We get it initially from uh, an anonymous narrator um, and a little bit through the kamikaze pilot's granddaughter. But it's all uh, supposition. It's all thought. It's all imagination as to what he must have thought, because this is the grandfather eventually who turns round and does not go into history for what he was meant to do to, to kill himself and to destroy an enemy target, but actually turns round and makes the decision to live and to spare others. And this first part is that imagination of what must have happened to, to change his mind. And mid journey, that kamikaze pilot starts to look down over the seas that he's flying above. He must have looked far down at the little fishing boats strung out like bunting on a green blue translucent sea. So deep down below him, he's flying at you know, a fairly high altitude and you can see below him the, the fishing boats. We can imagine the sails, roughly speaking, triangular sails like a, a typical yacht a typical sailing boat below and they're strung together looking a little bit like bunting quite a childhood image you know the sort of squares of uh, material squares of linen of gingham that uh, children have decorating their their bedrooms um, and they're also a sort of image of, of celebration and, and, and innocence and the kamikaze pilot looks down upon those and starts reminiscing and remembering his own childhood, which as many Japanese childhoods would have featured um, fishing. And we talked about grandfather's boat later on in, uh, in the poem. 
So he looks at that and thinks back to his childhood and he starts to think and wonder, was this the, the life I was supposed to have? Was this what I came into the earth to do? Is this what in our innocence as children we, we were destined to be? And it starts to put that seed of doubt into his mind. Notice there the green blue translucent sea. I wonder whether Beatrice Garland is trying to already get that element of doubt in the kamikaze pilot's mind. Not the blue sea, not the green sea, the green blue sea. It's indecisive, isn't it? It's it's neither one nor the other. Now, literally, you know, we can imagine a green blue sea, you know, that half shade, that turquoise shade between green and blue, perhaps. Um, but I wonder at, at that word choice. We could have said turquoise, we could have said green, we could have said blue, but green blue. Maybe there's the hint there of indecision, just the seeds of doubt. Uh, in the kamikaze pilot's mind. And beneath them, arcing in swathes like a huge flag, waved first one way, then the other, in a figure of eight, the dark shoals of fishes. Now, what he sees below is, is fish. And if you've ever looked at fish and how they move, it's incredible that they move as a shoal, a group of fish, huge numbers uh, of fish swimming one way then the other and we've got that idea later on the flashing silver which we'll come on to but he looks down on that i've tried to do a simplistic diagram of the the shoals of fish swimming one way then the other so it looks like a, a giant figure of eight now this whole image the arcing in swathes like a huge flag in a figure of eight this whole image is our quote to remember for this particular session and there's so much you can get from it i've covered the board here um, in suggestions from this particular quote. So let's start with the fishes literally swimming in their figure of eight. But then let's start to think about what the fish represent. The fish represent nature. They represent life. And so straight away the kamikaze pilot is thinking about the circle of life and how he's about to end his and end other people's lives. And that makes him feel uncomfortable. This isn't the natural way of things. This isn't how life should be. This wasn't what we were put on earth to do. But we've also got the fishes as a symbol of his childhood. There's plenty of images here in green. Look, remembered he and his brothers, children, fishes, strung out like bunting on a green, blue, translucent sea. The fishes remind him of his own childhood, that he used to go fishing with his family. And again, it takes him back to those innocent days. It juxtaposes and contrasts completely with him now as a warrior with that shaven head, with the samurai sword. He's not comfortable with that as a persona and it makes him remember. But we've also got the eight as a symbol of infinity. I don't know whether you know this, but if you take a, a standard figure eight and turn it on its side, it is the, the universal symbol for infinity. And infinity, again, is that idea of the circle of life, life everlasting, life leading to life, the onward circle and cycle of, of things. And again, that makes him feel uncomfortable. He doesn't feel like he's doing things in the natural way that they should be done. It makes him feel uncomfortable that he's going to end his and countless others' lives in the actions he's supposed to do. So that image of the, the figure of eight of the fishes, again, create that doubt, create that contrast in his mind. And then we've got the, how they swim. One way, look at the figure of eight, you go one way and then the other way. One way and the other. Again, is this a hint that Beatrice Garland is making to us about his change of mind? His mind is going first one way, then the other, just like the fishes are, are, are doing uh, far below him. Um, on the one hand, his duty. On the other hand, life, the natural order of things, his family, his childhood, his innocence. One way, then the other. And just like the fishes, his mind is swimming from one direction to another. The dark shoals of fishes flashing silver as their bellies swivel towards the sun. I think that idea of flashing silver is very important too. Many fish have um, silver scales on, on the underside of, 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 their, of their bellies, if you like. And as they, as they turn, the different colours shine. 
and if you've ever looked out at um, sunlight on water every now and again you get that um, that spark that that crystal reflection but it comes in different places and as the fish turn and different parts and different colors are seen this silver glints in the sunlight now remember that is also a reflection back on the very first stanza the sunrise we know it's a sunny day and the idea of hope and this sunrise reflects on the fishes and that again has got two readings to it firstly we've got the idea of natural beauty of the sunlight reflecting off the sea off the fishes this again takes him back it makes him think about nature makes him think about the natural order of things but also we need to link it to a different image in that first stanza the samurai sword and the glory of the the japanese warrior race flashing their silver swords which would have also glinted in the sun doing their patriotic duty for japan and again it's an image that makes him wonder between those two things does he take the patriotic duty does he take the natural order of things the childhood innocence the the fishes and the boats remind him of so all the way through these three stanzas you've got to be thinking about every single image having two sides having contradictions in them between the way the kamikaze pilot is feeling and remembered remembered is crucial isn't it remembered our memories our childhoods and that's where he's gone back to he's thinking all the time about um about his innocence about his family and that keeps coming back to him remembered how he and his brothers waiting on the shore built cairns of pearl gray pebbles cairn little buildings little structures made out of the pebbles balanced one on top of another um it's a very specific memory for him um, and it links him to his family and family ultimately becomes stronger than country for this kamikaze pilot. In part three, we'll look how that decision was deeply ironic that he chose his family and yet they eventually shun him. But at this moment, it's family that wins over because all of these different contrasting images in his head lean more heavily towards the family than towards the country. To see who's withstood longest the turbulent inrush of breakers bringing their father's boat safe let's think about those last couple of lines there turbulent turbulent if you think of turbulence on a plane it's um it's the the the, the contrast the violent uh, contrast between the plane and the air making it wobble turbulent inrush of breakers it's the water pounding against the shore so again, we've got this idea of conflict, both in the, the war sense, but also the conflict in, internally in the kamikaze pilot's minds, the turbulent inrush of breakers, bringing their father's boat safe. So ultimately, what makes him decide to come back is back to that childhood memory. And he remembers how his father brought the boat back safe. He watched his father go off to fish uh, in his boat but always came back safely and that's directly reminiscent of what he's doing going out in the plane he's not meant to come back safely but the image of his father coming back safely all the time wins over is more persuasive in his mind and that ultimately makes him decide to bring his boat his plane in this sense back home safely <laughs>